Oh, you gave me Hamilton. That's awesome. Hi, Colleen. Hi, how are you? Can you see me? My glasses? <laughs> no, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay, I have I have the pit. Well, do you have it set up that way or no? I think so. I think I must have uh, chosen the setting or Lorian did for uh, the because when I get a lot of people on, sometimes I, I do the option without the video. Okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah. No worries. No, just go okay. ahead and close it so you can't see me with my glasses on. <laughs> Yes, we're all getting there. We all need glasses. How is yes. how is the lighting glasses. for me? Can you see me okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm you your hair looks marvelous, darling. Thank you. Yes, I, I had to have a visit with my uh, my stylist. All right, well, we'll catch up later. I'm going to Yes, you. absolutely. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna look for the chat box and hopefully everybody can hear me. Good afternoon, it's Theo, and I'm gonna ask you if you have any questions to go ahead and save them to the end or put them in the chat box and I will answer them. And I wanna just say uh, thank you for uh, joining me today for another uh, webinar for charity. Today, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite topics which is uh, curating your life. And part of the, um, my passion about that is the fact that I think there's a lot coming at us. Uh, and now certainly with this pandemic, um, it's, it's inordinate, the amount of information and decisions that we have to make. So today we're gonna talk about how to really take this time to reframe and curate your life and make it what you want it to be and to put together a balance um, of what you want and, and how you uh, approach the actual, um, more so of how you're approaching the design of your life and take a step back. Because I think with all of us, um, it's, it's really easy to get caught up in what we're doing and, um, and to, not really design the life, but to be more reactive. And so this way, we're going to talk about uh, curating your life uh, as if it is a, a wonderful work of art, which it is, and going ahead and designing the facets that you want and using some of the tips and tools, because I've been really fortunate to um, work with some different individuals that have shared with me some ways to improve that. And, and make the most of it. But it's mostly a time to reset and to think about and to use this time at home um, to think about what you do want in life. I'm Theo Protromitis. I'm a CEO, author, mentor, and successful Amazon entrepreneur. Very excited about my Amazon business. It continues to grow. Obviously, the trend is that people are buying online, even more so, new customers. Um, and we're providing a service for people who have different reasons for not leaving the house. Obviously, it was mandated to start. And then as the uh, rollout and opening goes, 
online shopping is going to really uh, you know, keep that hold. I'm an expert mar marketing strategist, which means that I have a lot of experience in reviewing and bringing forth products, services, and um, working with different types of business models. And how I relate that to curating your life is that really it isn't any different. You come up with a vision for what you want a product or service to do, how you want it to help people and how you want to solve the problems, and then you put the plan into action. So this is one of my favorite topics of uh, designing and curating your life. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Taking control of the content you consume and create. In framing this, in this webinar, in this time, I'm gonna talk about two things, consumption, what goes in, and then creation, what goes out, and what you actually create on a daily and weekly basis. When you think about it that way, you're gonna see automatically, just based on our environment and our society, that there's a pretty much of an imbalance to where there's much more going in. So we just wanna be really responsible and deliberate about what it is that we're allowing uh, ourselves to consume. Some things we don't have a choice on, but the ones that you do, let's talk about how you can uh, curate that. Time for reflection and assessment. One question that people rarely get asked is where did you learn your time management skills? It's a funny question, but that's something that you may have had one class in high school about, but when it comes to managing time, um, where did those skills come from and what is the foundation of it? A lot of people will have learned it from their parents or their family. Uh, some of them learned it in a job just out of necessity and some have formal training. I had the good fortune early in my career to work for uh, Leadership Management International and I taught uh, Fortune 500 teams um, effective personal productivity. So it was integrating your personal and professional life. So I love the time management skills I learned there. Here's my Hamilton mug, my passion for uh, Broadway, and I can't wait for it to open back up. Um, so coming back to, are you one of these three types of personalities? Number one, are you carefree? and you let the schedule be flexible and changeable, and you just sort of go with the flow. Number two, moderate. You schedule things, but you mostly feel like you never do enough. I think a lot of people fall, fill in, uh, fall into that category. And, or scattered, always chasing things and missing appointments. Uh, there's another type of personality too. It's type A and you've got everything buttoned up and that you, you have everything fine tuned. So type A, isn't on here, but uh, those people that have everything scheduled down to the minute may not be looking to, uh, to, to do this kind of a webinar, but I might be surprised. So which one of those do you fall into? And of course you can be more than one. And with those two questions, with your reflection and assessment, it really starts to set your mind in the frame of how are you curating your life? What are you doing in the deliberate manner? And where did you learn those skills? And then what, how, how does your personality support or fight against you in attaining your goals? What does it mean to curate your life? Well, the definition of curate is to collect, select, and present information. And that's what you do every single day. Whether we know it or not, we are collecting, selecting, and presenting information. And we're going to talk about the balance between what we're, we're selecting and what we are actually putting back out there in the world. And I'm a huge advocate, as you'll hear during the course of this training, for creating at least one hour a day because you have a lot of God-given skills and talents, and that could come in many different forms we'll talk about. Give yourself credit. Okay, you think the, the statistics have said 60,000 thoughts. I think they've revised those to say about 20,000 or more thoughts every single day. And you, give yourself credit, you manage all of them. Some of them pop in, some of them that you think over and over again, but really you are already managing tons of information. Uh, sleep on average seven to eight hours a day and that's when your subconscious is in charge. So we're not gonna be talking about that time. That would be something more like a hypnosis 
or something where you program yourself. We're going to be talk about, talking about your waking hours and how it is that you're determining and curating the information that goes in and what you do with it. And our goal is to deliver a deep dive into how you're consuming, collecting, and experiencing content and the fabric of your life. Um, we all want to know that, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to invest in yourself. At this time, a lot of people are resetting and creating new mindsets, and I think it's a great uh, indicator that you want to increase, you want to go exponential, you want to become extraordinary. We're all dealing with uncertainty, um, we're all dealing with fear of somebody that you know. There's new kind of fear where your neighbor could infect you and you could infect somebody else. It's, a, it's sort of like another channel that's running for all of us. But what we want to talk about is what we can control and how do you curate that on your average day. Uh, we're all dealing with family, work, and health and spiritual. On an average day, how much time and energy and how are you blocking that off and being deliberate? For the time you spend with family and how are you making the most of that and curating it to say what kind of meaningful activities are you doing with family how are you managing work from home a lot of people are working from home for the first time and if you are an essential worker and you're going out there how are you uh, managing the stress of being one of those workers and communicating with other people because I feel like there seems to be a disconnect for essential workers that are carrying the load for all of us and letting other people know how you feel or if you have a household like Sharon has where her husband is a UPS worker and she is actually working at home so when he comes and goes there's a whole dynamic there so curating your life so that you can actually um, balance that and acknowledge each other's feelings about what that means and, and how you're showing up in the world. Are you a curator or a consumer? A little bit of both. My favorite quote is, stand guard at the door of your mind. Jim Rohn was the mentor and trainer for Tony Robbins. And this is one of the most profound things that he said that stands true today, which is your mind is so, so precious that you really wanna be careful as to what you're letting in and what decisions you're making there. I think all of us can relate to that. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. How many people recognize the wizard from the Wizard of Oz? And we're gonna talk now specifically about the men and women behind the curtain who are pulling the strings on content that you're creating. Take a perspective for one second to say that I worked and had the benefit of working in advertising and marketing for many, many years. So I'm working with teams and teams of creatives. I work with also the government and I've worked, I've been interviewed by multiple news sources. So when I say the man be and women behind the curtain, who is it, these teams of people that are curating volumes and volumes of information that they get in front of your eyeballs and their whole goal is to get you to consume the content. That's their whole goal is to get you either on social media, on a news channel, to actually pay attention to what they're presenting and stay there. It's their goal to get you to stay there as long as possible and probably take action to sign up for one of their newsletters or uh, take an action that um, will keep you in their focus. So those are the men and women that I call behind the curtain, pulling the strings, the wizards. And I call them wizards because they're incredibly creative. And if you think about them, there's teams and teams. I have a list here that I won't read through, but as a point of reference, and I'll be sending out the slide deck to everybody after the presentation, along with the replay, is um, Facebook, it just, uh, I'll highlight a few of them. Facebook and Instagram have over 40,000 employees. What do you think those 40,000 people do every single day? What, what is their singular focused goal? Is to keep you on Facebook as long as possible. 
consuming, engaging, and they're going to do everything humanly possible to get you captured there on Facebook and Instagram. And they do a pretty incredible job. I think everybody would agree. Uh, Amazon has over 800,000 employees. Now, all of them are not in the curation or actually creating content for you to consume. Uh, some of them are in the warehouse. A lot of them are making the supply chain work, but they're all part of a team with a customer obsession. And a customer obsession, because I'm an Amazon seller, is the fact that they want to be your everything. They want you to engage and to go there. And they have a whole team sending you um, push emails, follow up, all of that. And so there's 840,000 people who are behind the curtains. And as we go down, the uh, TikTok, which is the new latest craze, Chinese owned and operated, 2,000 employees, and their whole goal is to get you to dance on video and share it and, and go viral. Um, then when we come to the news, so there's a couple of different ways that we curate our lives and the biggest wizards behind the curtains are in social media and in news. And at this particular time, I find that even a, a lot of people are just glued to their sets. And really, if you think about it, you have to come up with your own standard. One of the uh, disciplines that I suggest, come up with your own standard and stick to it to curate your life is how many minutes will you consume of news and what's, uh, what will suffice so that you stay informed to the level, depending on your job, um, will determine how much news you need to consume. Um, I would suggest if you are not working as, a, uh, a, as an advocate or if you're not in the news or editorial business um, or any particular reason that your job dictates that you need to know more, from multiple sources, I would say pick a balanced view of news and then 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night. Any major developments you're gonna hear, but checking back constantly is gonna be one of the keys um, that is robbing you of your ability to design your life and to create a broader vision. Um, then we go to 189,000 people working in advertising agencies and ad revenue exceeds $183 billion in advertising spend. So that's a lot of money. You've got the social media, you've got news, and then you have the advertisers who are pushing for brands so that you spend time on either their websites or in their stores or you know, getting you to take action. So there's 189,000 people fighting for your attention too. When all the while, curating your life really means being in charge and creating a discipline that balances it out so that you are creating as much as you're consuming, because that is how you honor your God-given gift. And I love one of those quotes that says, um, your talents are your gift to you, and what you do with them is your gift to God. I love that quote. can't remember who said it, but it was somebody smart. Um, so look at all these people, the wizards behind where, you know, what they're doing and how they're, um, fighting for your attention. What do they all have in common? Like I said, they're fighting for your attention to curate your life. They're, they don't want you to be in charge. They, it's their whole goal to be in charge. All those thousands and hundreds of thousands of people, that's what their goal is. And you, you may work in that industry as well. And now maybe you'll see it framed in, in that regard. I think that distinction alone would make this investment of one hour worth it for you to realize that it is their entire goal to lock your eyeballs and your time and energy and get you to go to their content that's created. And they have some, some wonderful people and some of the things that you need. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just making sure that you're in charge. Average social media consumption is three hours daily. I think that's a, a low estimate personally, but it's an average, okay? So that would add up to 21 hours a week, uh, 1,092 hours annually, or 68 days. Can you even fathom before social, for those of you who were around before that, that what else did people do? They had all that much more time to spend time with family, to curate their own lives, to create content, to go for a bike ride, to sit outside, to bake a cake. Um, and now 
68 days out of every year on average are taken up and what the value of that is for people varies. It, like I said, it's not all bad, but some of it is. There are studies. I have, a, um, I have the great fortune to having participated and earned a certificate from Yale University in the science of well-being. And Dr. Lori Santos is one of the most, she's actually the most popular professor they've ever had. Um, and basically the studies all show that inordinate amount of social media does have a detrimental effect, that there are um, better ways for you to build yourself up, to connect. But these days when we're at home so much, people are leaning more hours on the social interaction. So just making sure that that is a, a deliberate um, thing for you and that you've scheduled time in and that you're not going down the rabbit hole. How many of us know about that? Scrolling, scrolling, stop. Scrolling, scrolling, stop. And you can mind numbing. And when you wake up in the morning, first thing you do is grab your phone because it's chemical. There's the neuroscience behind it, that there's that dopamine, that's, there's that rush of who liked my post, who um, post, what is everybody doing? And you sort of become robotic as to how you're going to get your day started, what your mindset is going to be. But just think about opening up your mind first thing in the morning to whatever is on there, somebody else curated. And now that time when your mind is the most suggestible, when you could quietly sit for 10 minutes with a cup of coffee and sort of just uh, think about all the great things and create that vision curating your life has now been programmed. And the more you do it, the more it becomes an unbreakable habit, which becomes an addiction, which a lot of people have. Um, they program, curate, and own more than two months of the average person's lives. And again, just thinking about that in literal terms um, has been really helpful for me. And as we go on, I'm gonna share some other um, resources and tools that you can make other decisions on how to be purposeful and, and get more of you and less of them. Good news, you can curate your life. Step one. I'd highly encourage you, if you took the time to do this webinar with me, track an, uh, an average day for three days in a row. So three days in a row, just jot down, doesn't have to be exact, what you're doing. What do you do when you first wake up? What do you, you know, you sit down at your desk, um, you know, and, and track your average day and chunk it out and see what you're spending your time on. It comes back to time management and it comes back to your ability to actually curate your own life. Then step two is to log in and limit social media, email, online time, and decide what you wanna consume. So curating your life is to be the director or the curator to decide what it is that's going to be the most important to you. How are you going to take the time that you have been given in the world and how are you going to make the most of it? Um, so limiting that time on social, email, and online and deciding what you want to consume. Step three, set creation goals for newly found free time for cooking, baking, art, and exercise. The fact is the whole goal of this to curate your life is so that you actually have, sorry, uh, the time to invest in whatever you want. And those things for the creation side can have to do with something cooking, baking. It doesn't have to be artistic. It could be uh, painting. It could be fixing cars, whatever it is that you love. But it's a way for you to express your skills and your love and, and to put things out in the world instead of being the one to always consume. Break old habits of letting someone else curate your life. Commit. This is what I was big, big challenge. Hopefully everybody's still with me. Commit to not checking your phone for the first hour of the day and the last half an hour. Those are the times when your brain most suggestible and most needs to decompress from electronics and from input. I talked about before, limit the news to 15 minutes a day and uh, 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the night. 
again, you can adjust that in curating your life uh, depending on what your vocation is and whether that is actually required for um, what you do. Learn to sit quietly without scrolling. Um, creative thoughts need space. So we're talking about time to actually, some people say, oh, I don't meditate. I don't, I don't know how to do that. It, you don't have to meditate. All you have to do is let the creative thoughts have space to actually grow and give them a chance when you are creating something and brainstorming. Journaling is a really good point that um, I wish I could see a show of hands of how many people actually journal. Because when we allow our mind to actually create and actually get out what it is that we think is important and creative ideas, things that we've always wanted to do, things that places we've always wanted to go and creating a broader vision for content has been something that is, you know, age old for journaling. I think that's something that is underrated and you don't have to sit quietly and meditate and have ohm. That's one way to do it. And maybe you do both things. Maybe you do the journaling in the morning and the meditation at night or, and you, you do a combination. But sitting quietly is something that is a lost art. Just the other day, I had my, uh, since I meditate every, every day, I had my kids come outside and just sit quietly for a couple of minutes. I put the timer on and just sat quietly. I gave them an overview of what it was going to be and, and what the intention was. And it was sort of weird a little bit for my son, but we had a fun time and just listen to the birds. And I think it's a skill that is a lost art. Um, so sitting quietly cannot be underrated as part of curating your life, as part of being in charge and creating that vision. Uh, just the other thing that I suggest is disable social media notifications on your phone. What I see constantly is that people have now been trained that they have a lack of attention and that when, say for instance, in the days when we could go out to dinner, we would sit there and people would have their phones out and then they would get notifications and they'd constantly be looking on the, you know, the phone for who text. Oh, and then they'd say, oh, sorry. But the fact is, is it's still divided attention. So you can never reach your complete potential if your attention is divided. Uh, so disabling the social media notifications, again, unless it is part of your um, part of your job and something that you have to do, that there isn't really a lot of reasons why the uh, notifications need to be on. Um, only check your email three times a day. This is something that I have taught in other classes for an entire class to think about this. Email can actually dictate and dominate your life. If, even if you're working, I suggest that you do this. If you have a boss that expects you to answer immediately, then you may need to amend that. But you may, instead of checking it, just scan it. Instead of actually opening, you make a discipline. So you only open emails from clients that have uh, top priority or from your boss if you can't just check email several times a day, then you can actually um, change that. But what I've found in doing it is in my mind, knowing that a blog, people ask me all the time, one of the most common questions, some of you online have asked me this before, uh, how do I do it all? The reason and the way that I do it all is that I curate my life. When I make a decision that I'm gonna check my email three times a day, it gives me permission to have complete focus on something when I'm doing it. And I don't feel torn that I need to check my email because again, what we see is email pushes and, and emails call to action are ways of those wizards behind the curtain to actually get you back. They're fighting 
for your attention. So they want you to click. Clickbait, they try to get the right headline or um, subject line. But when you think about it, who's in charge? Curate your own life. Make that decision, customize it to what your requirements are for your job, understandably. And if you have to leave email open or check it once an hour, make sure that your discipline is that you are only opening the emails. You have to stick to it, that you're only opening them and you make a short list. I promise you, you are not going to miss something urgent. Urgent. I promise you that if you do it, you're going to free up your mind share that you need to curate your own life and to create the vision for those lofty goals. Next week, this webinar as a spoiler alert, spoiler alert is I'm going to be diving deeply into creating a vision board and creating a vision for your life. So curating your own life, this is sort of the how-to and all the technical behind the scenes, the why to do it, and, and then we're gonna be talking about the actual vision. So this is the groundwork for that, to decide to check emails only three times a day. For some of you that are maybe job seeking, you have a sense of urgency, I understand that. So with social media notifications and emails, things that are going to demand, think of them as maybe like, like bratty kids that are stomping their feet saying, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. That's how obnoxious and ridiculous they are. They will do anything to get you to spend the life God gave you on earth with them, to go down the rabbit hole of a video, to engage to learn more the whole goal there and i don't want it to seem because i love advertisers i've worked with the most creative people on earth and there are valuable lessons to be learned there are things that you need to buy there are things that you need to know and it just feels great there's great that you have the world of all the content but let it be on your terms when you decide that that's your time if you want to set aside a certain amount of time to scroll and look for you know, new creative ideas or learn something, maybe you donate or dedicate, which is also donating it, dedicate 30 minutes a day. I, I meet so many people and I've trained with uh, Leadership Management International, so many people that say that they don't have time. But when you dive deeper into what you're really doing with your time and you do that assessment we talked about earlier in the webinar, and you do track for three days what those chunks of time are being dedicated to, you will see that you free up time. And then you're gonna to want to curate your life because in your roles of family, being a mother, being a daughter, being a husband, being a worker, in the role of your life, you're gonna to want to make sure that you are serving the, the greater good for that. And say, for instance, uh, if you, in a family setting, you want to improve or increase the meaningfulness of the time you're spending together. So you really want to free up the time and think about that, what a gift that's going to be to curate your own life. Free up time with these little tips and hints and still stay plugged in, still learn what's going on in the news, still go on social, but do it on your terms. And then that time you can dedicate to those really meaningful relationships and connections and, and, and deliberately go to them to either create something if you want to, you know, my daughter and I love to make beef stew together. So it's a whole process where you've got to prep all the vegetables and it's, it's the creation process. But you can't do that if you always feel behind the eight ball and you always feel like you don't have time and you don't realize that all those wizards behind the scenes are fighting for your attention. And they're really robbing you of your rightful place in the world to actually decide where you wanna spend time, what you wanna do. Don't let them rob you. Take control, curate your own life. And I feel like an evangelist for this because it's really enriching and fun when you do it and you find a half an hour and you find that you can just be there um, there is nothing more fun than doing that. 
So dream big. How are we doing for time? We're doing great. Um, journal and act on. We're, this is a precursor to creating your vision board, but start when you're journaling and you're taking that time to think and curate what it is that you always wanted to do. And a lot of us have had um, the dreams beaten out of us or people just you know negative saying you could never do that or people having opinions about what your dreams are. And so you have to be careful who you share them with. Uh, Brene Brown does a, a great um, segment on that, that you know, being really careful of who you share these thoughts and ideas with. And when you leave this webinar, what happens when I've done training before, people are gung-ho and they leave and they wanna do it and implement it. And then their first circle of influence of the people closest to them, you wanna tell them and you say, hey, you know, what if, if you're married, you say, hey, I attended this great webinar about curating your life and I'm gonna make all these changes. And the person who is the closest to you says, oh, that never works. You always get excited about that. And they, they rain on your parade. So I would encourage you to carefully transition to curating your own life and keep it close to the best to begin. Because this is yours. This is your life. And if you have somebody that's close to you that you want to share it with, they may or may not just be aware. They may or may not buy into it. But the mo most important thing is that you give yourself permission to dream big and you understand the value of actually putting something into the universe as opposed to having the one way consumption consumption this generation has been raised on consuming content 24 7 and it's a battle i have a, a resource at the end um, a wonderful, wonderful man who left Facebook, he was in marketing there, and really saw the woes of you know, the, the social media addiction and being online all the time. And he created his own company called Purposeful. And he actually trains parents how to um, break that social media addiction or online, it doesn't have to just be social, um, gaming, whatever it is. And he is, calls himself a recovering Facebook executive, and he actually um, still loves social for what it is. As long as you're controlling it and you're using it for your benefit, it's fantastic to connect with people. It's fantastic to show pictures and to share, um, especially at this time. Um, but again, making sure that you don't allow somebody else to squash your dreams. And most of the time, and I, I actually am in the process of finalizing my next book. Part of it is talks about the fact that the circle of influence closest to you is having the biggest impact on how you curate your life. Just the little nuances and the patterns that we get into, it's not that they don't have your best interest at heart, but there's multiple reasons why. One of them is because maybe they're afraid of being left behind. Maybe they're not growing. How many of you feel that? They're not growing at the same rate that you are. They're not dreaming big. They have a different life history. So they're afraid you're gonna leave them behind. So they kind of want you to stay where you are because they don't understand why you're trying to dream big. Isn't this enough? Yes, it's enough, but you're honoring your talent, your skills and your creativity. And so many people I talk to when I say, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? It's one of my favorite questions. Um, isn't because I don't love failure. I do love failure and I've had tons of it. <laughs> Some of you on here know that and that's where I've le learned my biggest lessons. But what would you do if you knew you could not fail? Gets people in a different mindset because people don't allow themselves to dream big. They're afraid to do that because they're afraid to be embarrassed or to fall short. But I am a big advocate of journaling and then acting on. So brainstorming, I always wanted to. So for me, I always wanted to have my own talk show. Working towards that, putting things in line, opening myself up for connections to have a, a national talk show. 
because I love connecting with people. I love hearing stories and I love to, uh, to share stories, my own and other people's to enrich other people's lives. Because when you can relate to somebody, I'm a certain person and somebody else said to me, uh, Oh, what, what am I going to say that hasn't already been said? That's the wrong question. You are, there, there are plenty of things that can be said over and over again, but a different messenger is going to reach a different audience. You don't have to say something that hasn't been said. You don't have to dream something that hasn't been done before. It's your life and it's unique based on that. You're going to tell the story a little differently. I'm going to be somebody for curating your life that's going to appeal to a different set of people than um, somebody else. The next question I would love to learn about. Courses online, uh, I think the pandemic and the shift is creating a, a big awareness of the role of universities just the prospect that people are expected to go to school for four years or eight or whatever amount of time and then stop learning and go to work, stop the formal kind of learning, to me is insane. I'm always, always learning, always taking certificate courses, um, always joining a mastermind, always, always stretching and challenging. So what would you love to learn about? It's out there. There's an inordinate, and if you curate your life and you free up from the, uh, the social media, from the email, from the interruptions, maybe it's well, probably not now, but before it could have been interruptions where there was somebody in your family or in your neighborhood that would come by and just talk to you for an hour and in a sense, being able to manage and curate your own life to put boundaries. Um, there for things that are actually taking up your time. You still want to be helpful, but um, so I would love to go to. That's something we need to dream big because right now we can't really go anywhere. I had a family trip, sadly enough, it was all paid to of all places, June 1st, my whole family, we were, um, my cousin had coordinated it. Usually I'm the coordinator. I coordinate my family reunions in my spare time because I curate my life and I have time to actually do that, um, that we were going to Milan, Italy on June 1st. And sadly enough, that got canceled or moved back. But still, I would love to go to. We're still gonna go there. We're gonna go the following year and it's gonna be wonderful. It's very disappointing, but I'm still dreaming big. Um, I'm most interested in, how much time do you actually spend curating your life and actually asking that question. We seem to be on autopilot and not honoring what you're most interested in. Are you interested in learning about, you know, ancient Greece? That would be mine. Um, are you interested in um, finding out about um, the history of art for a certain artist? Um, or I would love to write, paint, do martial arts, sew, garden, sing. There's a part of most every person that I meet that is not being honored, that is not being pursued. And I would love this curate your life to be the um, sort of the, the wake up call to say that deserves to come to life. It deserves to be honored. And we really want to give you a platform to actually curate your life and dream big honor those things. There's always time for them and you don't know what they will turn into. You don't have to do it with the intention. It could be a side hustle. Some people do it where they start a little project. Um, Michelle from Outfront Brands has been making masks to, to actually you know, help people because she's always a community person and that has turned into something. She's gotten a lot of orders for them and that's just using her creativity because she loves to design. She has her own line of dog collars called Livy and Company. And she took her skills and talents and matched it up with her desire and her dream to make a difference in the world. That's one of my reasons for donating the proceeds every week for my webinars to a different charity. It does two things. It allows me to dream big 
and it allows me to highlight the different charity and help them tell their story. And this week, it's Pledge Camp, which is a wonderful crowdsourcing on blockchain. Sounds fancy and complicated, but it's not really. It's the new technology that is the infrastructure that Bitcoin got started on. So people associate them together, but it's just the actual um, transparency platform of blockchain. And then they crowdsource businesses. And you know my passion is women and entrepreneurs, small businesses. Um, but what they're doing as a company, as a socially responsible company, is they have a fundraiser. We're going to be donating to it. Thank you for being part of it. Um, that your money is going to provide PPE for frontline healthcare workers, healthcare heroes. And I have a niece that is in Harlem. She's uh, 24 years old and she's uh, an ICU nurse caring for COVID-19 patients 12 hours a day. And when it first started, it was very scary because I actually called out for my uh, connections to uh, provide masks because they were very limited in supply and she was expected to use the same mask for five consecutive days. So what Pledge Camp is doing, providing PPE for frontline healthcare heroes is near and dear to my heart because of Eva and also because I want to use my platform, dream big, curate my life so that I can make those decisions I feel great about myself because in my niche in the world, it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't even have to be money. It could just be sharing the, uh, the great works uh, of an organization that you believe in. So I'm a huge advocate of contribution and dreaming big. Curate your life on your terms. If one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams or her dreams and endeavors to live the life which he or she has imagined, she will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. So beautiful from a poet, Henry David Thoreau, written a long time ago, but I couldn't say it any better. And I really do believe that if you advance confidently in the direction of your dreams, that means you have to give birth to your dreams. You have to give yourself the quiet time. You have to curate your, your life make those decisions and you have to push back. If the people closest to you are not uh, rallying behind you to say, yes, you can do that. Oh, that's a great painting. And if they're giving you static to say, oh, that's dumb. Why are you doing that? You want to learn to do uh, you know, pottery? Well, you're never going to make any money at that. All those things, maybe you're lucky and nobody in this <laughs> webinar has uh, people in their immediate circle that do it, but I think they do it without even realizing that they're doing it, or they just make faces, or they don't ask any questions. One of the worst things that ever happens is that you're really excited about something, say for instance, this webinar, and you'd go to tell somebody and say, oh yeah, I, I've got the replay and I really want you to listen to it because it's got some great points of how we can find more time in our lives and curate our own lives, and that they totally flatline. That's almost worse than saying something negative because if they say something negative, then you go, oh, well, you're just, a, you know, uh, uh, you're just being neg negative. But if they do say nothing or they don't even ask you one level deep question of where'd you hear about the webinar? What did you like about it? They're not even engaging with you. It, then you realize and you have to let yourself know what's your strategy going to be. When you're curating your own life, you're going to get some pushback, believe me, because we all get into patterns and other people are used to you doing and being and, and conducting yourself a certain way. I'm not saying that you have to make a huge change, although why not? It's your life. Uh, you're in the driver's seat. But any, even a subtle change, when people try to put you back into that and say, Oh, you used to be so fun. What are you trying to design your life for? You're not happy with your life? You're trying to talk about big ideas. Oh, and you're t telling them about what you journaled about. Oh, I'd really like to go to, uh, you know, I'd really like to go to um, Zimbabwe. And that they're not getting on board. You have to make two decisions. One is, how are you going to deal with that disappointment? And I like to hit those potential uh, 
you know, I'm not going to just talk about panacea, like everything's going to be easy to curate your own life. These patterns took a long time to create. And if you're smart about it, you can answer the question, what are you going to do if someone close to you is pushing back on you improving the quality of your life? That's a really, really important question. What are you going to do? You can't make them change, but you can try to encourage them to come along. If they're open in any regard and they want to interact with you, you can introduce them with trying to include them in something that you're doing that they might like. And maybe they'll see the way, but be prepared if they don't, that you still have the decision to make to curate your own life. If they want to say, for instance, one thing I didn't mention, sometimes it escapes my mind as a time waster. <laughs> it's binging on Netflix or watching television shows. There's nothing wrong with that, but as a time waster, it's a number. It's something that takes you out of this, the uh, creation, uh, creation process which I think is the greatest gift ever. Obviously you see, I have content everywhere. <laughs> I'm always creating and thinking and interviewing and writing on the part there. It takes you out of that and puts you back into the consumption. You're a consumer, you're a consumer. It's somebody else's story. Think about the wizards behind the story. There was a writer, there's a director, there's ad agencies that are promoting it. Somehow they got you onto the couch or into your bed to actually click on that and abdicate responsibility, which can be actually soothing in a limited amount of, it's, it's great. I mean, I think there's nothing better than actually that creative process. And I'm a big uh, lover of documentaries because it's two things. I get to actually escape, but I actually get to learn. And um, I subscribe to Curiosity Stream, which is part of this, the Discovery Network um, and also Gaia, which has a lot of meditation and documentaries on rewiring the brain. And, um, but if, if you're thinking about your life, make sure that when you're doing the three day assessment that you include in there. So if you have somebody that is your partner that is used to you abdicating and just zoning out with them, and now you suddenly get up from the couch and go, okay, well, I just watched my one hour of Netflix and now I'm going to, uh, go over here and uh, you know, paint a coffee mug or I'm going to go write an article or you know, blog or do something, um, be prepared for the inertia uh, that comes with that. And I, I've seen it many times. So um, honor that and, and have something that you can say where you say, well, you know, I know that that's what we usually do together. I'm gonna watch that one show. And then I've got some other things I'm really interested in doing. I'd love to include you if you want to come over and, um, you know, work on your, you know, your model car that you always wanted to build, whatever it is, and, and transition them in there. But it's okay. You're going to have to be prepared for change if that's what you want. This is a webinar to challenge you to say, what does curating your life really mean? What is it like? I use the word curate because... I love it, I love museums, but the curator of a museum is somebody that actually selects the priceless work that is there, how it is displayed, how the stories are told. They actually, that's what you're doing for your life. You're actually given the gift to be in charge. And we have now gotten to a point that we have tons of wizards behind the scenes fighting for our attention to curate your life. They wanna be in the driver's seat. That's their goal, is to make sure that they take your attention and they get you to consume what it is that they created. And a lot of it is wonderful. A lot of it enriches your life. But a lot of it is mind numbing and it passes that point. And I encourage you when you're doing your assessment and then you're setting out to pick those items that make sense for you in managing, turning off your notifications, managing your email, I'd encourage you to look at it and think about it in a new way. I think after this webinar, one of the greatest takeaways is gonna be that once you are 
consuming if you picture the fact that you are sitting in your car and you're driving your own life. And when you do that, you scoot over and you give somebody else the wheel and say, here, you drive the way I feel. You drive what I'm thinking. You drive the information. They're in control. You're going to give them the driver, the wheel, and you're going to be a passenger in your own life. The creation process is a gift, letting things come through you. And you can start very, uh, with 10 minutes a day, with journaling, you can start with an hour a day. That's my ultimate goal is to change the world and to get every human on the planet creating one hour a day, honoring their God-given gifts and creating something and giving gifts to the world and democratize that and take the wizards out of the role of controlling <laughs> what's going in and let the collective, because I believe in humans, I believe in goodness, I believe in our, uh, our God-given talents that are not unlocked. I think everybody has something to give and I want to hear more of it. I love Peter Diamandis, who is the founder of the X Prize, not just because he's Greek, he's got the brilliant Greek brain, but um, he created the X Prize. And what they do, if you're not familiar with it, is they actually take on the biggest issues in life, life's biggest, like clean water, or some, it started out as space travel, and they mobilize teams around the world from anywhere. And they put a $10 million prize and purse on it. Pretty nice prize. You better go for it. And what I love about that, that relates to my lifelong goal of getting every human on the planet to create one hour a day, is the fact that the opportunity to come up with the solutions to the world's biggest problems could be in a village in Africa. It could be in Norway. That's one thing that's wonderful about connecting the world with uh, the internet, with smartphones, with social media. You can find affinity groups, but I would encourage you to find the affinity groups that are more closely aligned with your values and your vision for yourself and give yourself permission to dream big. So I want you to curate your life and help me because you can be some of the first hundreds to actually meet that goal of creating one hour a day. What do they all have in common? Um, basically, we have a list here of ways that you can change your life, curate your own life. You can get custom curated news at futureloop.com and you're gonna be receiving this, so you don't have to um, worry about jotting it down or anything or screenshots. Peter Diamandis started, he out of a need, he started his own news source aggregator, and it's based on what is solution-based news and positive, and it's called Future Loop. And you just sign up, and then you basically have options of what you want to hear about in the news, and instead of just using one news source, they do from scientific journals and whatever you want to learn about. So I encourage you to go there. It's free. Sign up, uh, be in the beta, and you give feedback. Meditation techniques. I talked about Gaia.com. Distractive technology support from a fire prior Facebook executive on purposeful.nyc. Or join a mastermind or create one. A mastermind is something where you just get like-minded people. I talked about a lot about, and you might think, that it was disproportionate, but I, I really think that one of the, the biggest challenges to curating your own life and creating one hour a day are the, the five people closest to you. So if you create a mastermind, you can just curate a group of people that, you know, uh, that have that same goal in, in mind. So I would encourage you, or you can join one that currently exists. There's lots of ways to do this. Um, so we're at the point of question and answer. I did run over a little bit, but would love at this point um, if you want to put anything in the chat box. And um, if not, you can always follow up because we're going to be sending an email. Lorian is going to be helping me to uh, handle some of these questions and inquiries, and we can answer any questions personally if we don't get to you today. 
Anybody have any questions? Okay. I had a question from Caitlin and she had asked about, um, she was starting her own blog and she start, she asked about actually, um, you know, honoring that and getting it out there. How do you start the process if you're going to be creating and how can you um, share it with the world? And um, I think it's fantastic. I'm very proud of her. Number one, she's um, an occupational therapist and she's passionate about what she does. She wrote a blog. And I think the most important point there when you're creating uh, or curating your life, when you start, start small is just try to reach one person. Find one person that'll be interested in it. Um, find them and then ask them to pass it along. And really the age old, you know, a million subscribers are going viral. The way that we're gonna change the world for the better with people creating um, one hour a day, and part of this is Caitlin's blog, is if we just make that one connection and then it'll go from there and having those real expectations. So thank you for that question. Thank you all for joining me, for curating your life. And I look forward to seeing you. Oh, we got a hand raised. Yes, I'm going to be excited to unmute. Okay, let's see, allow to talk. Okay, great. Colleen, do you have a question? I'm gonna unmute you. There we go. Maybe we're fighting with the unmute button. There we go. <laughs> I promise I'm going to get this. Technology will not get us, Colleen. Okay. Oh, there we go. I can hear you. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I <laughs> I actually really didn't have a question. I just want to say a comment. I ex and I accidentally hit the button. I'm trying to uh, um, move my uh, laptop around. Um, no, it was just a great uh, webinar, Theo. And I thank you very much. Puts a lot into you know perspective. Is um, you know, I just wanted to share that. Well, thank you. And did some of it resonate with you personally on some of the things that you do? Because I know that you're very, I know Colleen personally, um, but I know that she's very creative and she, she's very dedicated to um, mental health, exercise, you know, doing those things. But there was something in here that actually reminded you of some additional steps you could take. Yeah, I just think that you know, well, I know you brought up the vision board and it's, it's something that I know you're going to be talking on next week. Yeah. Um, but I, I think a lot of that is if, if you can, like what your dreams are, if you can, um, you know, absolutely visual, visualize it and put that plan together every day and also writing down <clears throat> your, your notes um, and taking that time every morning, um, I actually get up every morning and now try to, um, with coffee and, and read for, you know, a book that is motivational for me and, or listen to a Ted talk so that, um, you know, it puts a skip in my step and then I can, uh, you know, focus for the rest of the day and, and plan the rest of the day out. Yep. Awesome. Because that's, that speaks to what we were talking about with curating your life is the fact you have chosen the input. Input is, is not always, you know, it can be mind numbing, but it can also be something that builds you up. And so you're starting the day with something that's setting the tone to be, you know, to reading. There's, there's so much great success literature. There's so much great personal development mindset. And like you said about Ted talks and, um, I love to hear that, that you, you know, develop that practice there. And, and I appreciate the feedback. Yep. And I always love your books and all the motivational. There's one I'm reading. I saw the speaker um, in January and I'm rereading the book. And I also gave this book to my niece and she was able to, uh, you know, unfortunately the pandemic, she ended up getting an opportunity at Marriott Waterside mm -hmm. based on uh, this book and taking the steps and the actual, the actual uh, 
title of the book is Fear is My Homeboy. So it's a great read. It's a lot of fun. Judy Holler is the author. Um, and uh, so if, if you have the opportunity to, to grab that book as well. Um, yes, those are the best places to get that. If you don't mind, since I do know you personally, would you mind to drop that in an email to me just so I don't forget yes. wrapping up yep. and doing that? Yep. So I am going to in the uh, in the essence of time, go ahead and end the webinar. But thank you so much for participating. And for those of you who are listening in the replay, feel free to drop an email to Lorian at the prodromitiscompanies.com. We're gonna email you and you don't have to write that down and figure out how to spell that. Um, and let her know if there's any way that we can help you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.